Hello, I'm Bob Jackson. I'm the uh, educational liaison with the PRISM project here at Rose Holman Institute of Technology. The uh, PRISM project uh, is a K-12 outreach program for um, now all teachers, okay, uh, predominantly teachers in Indiana, okay, and at one time that's uh, the uh, Indiana borders pretty well confined us, but uh, we're not turning any teachers away now. Okay, PRISM actually stands for Portal Resources for I Portal Resources for Indiana Science and Math Teachers. Okay, the program started in 2003. The program started as an outreach from predominantly to science and math teachers. Okay, and uh, the program offers all along online resources. Uh, but also have done uh, STEM professional development uh, programs, uh, workshops um, for science and math teachers. We still do do those workshops. Of course, we're kind of got uh, slowed up a bit with the pandemic, but we do plan hopefully to get uh, back going with workshops this coming summer in a face-to-face -face format in which those workshops uh, our key one is a sustainable energy workshop, workshop. and then we do some uh, uh, partnership workshops with uh, school districts. Uh, one that we've uh, done ever since I've been here is with Beagle County Schools every June, okay, um, in which the, the school districts uh, get grants and uh, and then we partner with them to provide professional development to their math and science teachers. And uh, that is one of my key roles and I really enjoy it. Okay, our main thing that we offer on an everyday basis to teachers throughout Indiana and, uh, for the last 17 years and in the, in the last year or so we've uh, actually uh, will allow any, any teacher onto the system. Uh, whether in Indiana or elsewhere. So if you have friends uh, or colleagues that are uh, teachers in other states, they are uh, welcome to uh, jump on and uh, utilize our resources. Okay, I'm uh, uh, President Hasty uh, to uh, kind of uh, uh, introduce teachers to our resources. Okay, um, so anyway, what, what I want to do is uh, I'm going to show you the uh, uh, our website and what we have for you, okay, and for all teachers. Okay, so when you go to our website, you will see uh, this page here, okay, which you go to rose-prism.org, okay, rose-dash mark, whatever you want to call it, okay, prism.org, p-r-i-s-m, okay, dot org. When you get there, you will see this page, okay? Now then, you're not gonna be able to do much of anything until you create an account, okay? Because actually what, you, what you're gonna see is this is a learning management system. It is the Moodle LMS, which is, a, um, um, is actually the number one learning management system in the world that is open source. It's free, and it's always in development, and uh, uh, we keep ours updated to the newest version uh, that are available on, on Moodle. Uh, it is a good LMS. It's, it's a highly secure, it's, it's highly reliable, and our team here at Rose tries to ensure that it is the most reliable one for our teachers. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do if you, if you want to utilize our resources is create an account for yourself. When you go in to create an account for yourself, please go all the way through the process and fill it out completely. Okay, you're going to, you're going to give your name, you're going to uh, provide a password for yourself, and that's what is a have to be in order for you to be accessing the learning management system. Okay, but and you're going to put your position and then it's real important to come down here and I want to kind of walk through this part because a lot of teachers don't go all the way down through this. Like they'll get down to, I'll show you here in just a second. 
uh, you're going to select the stay. They stop here by going school corporation and then just select in the school corporation that you work at. We really want you to, and it will make it better for you, particularly if you get a number of teachers in your school district using, utilizing our services, because you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to share things between us a lot easier. Particularly if, uh, if you uh, go into building question banks for quizzes, uh, we have a number of teachers down in Evansville School District that have created question banks that are shared banks between the teachers. And the only way we can get that set up with them is if this part's done right right here because we've got to have what school you're at. So if you'll go uh, select school, okay, and then your county, every school in the state of Indiana is listed in here, okay? So you will find your school. I'm going to select West Beagle. I taught at West Beagle High School for 25 years prior to being here. Okay, and then click Submit. And that's going to have created you an account into our system where you can fully utilize all our resources. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the main page. Once you've created an account, you're going to see when you come to this page that you're going to put your username here, which should be your school email, your password, and you log in. And then each and every time you come back to the PRISM website, this is what you're going to see. Okay, this is our main page. It is also the Moodle learning management system that we host for all teachers. Okay, you have a main menu over here on the left side, and then you have uh, some blocks over here with some good information in them on the right side. Okay, uh, and that's why you can see this is a uh, learning management system. These are blocks, okay, and menus. Okay, and the course contents coming down through the middle here. Okay, so now then over here, just to kind of walk you through some of the things about PRISM, that's information about our staff. Dr. Carlson is our director. Tanya is a marketing specialist and program advocate for our program. This is me. And then Ryan Smith, to me, he's by far our most important person because he is a system administrator making sure this is all going very well, okay, and uh, it is very important to him that the system is um, secure and reliable for all our teachers, and I mean, he really does a fantastic job of uh, taking care of our teachers, and he updates the, takes the updates for Moodle about every week, but now when he does updates, he does have to take the system down for a short period of time, but he is so conscientious in it in that he typically does this on a Saturday night, okay, late, okay, usually 11, 12 o'clock on a Saturday night when there's the least number of people on doing any coursework on their, on their courses, whether it be teachers or students, okay? So now then, go back home, okay? Contact us. If you click contact us, it's just going to take you to email and you will be emailing me. So you can send questions or whatever, and we really do try to make an effort because I've got it coming to my cell phone that I will get back. I'll get back with you as quick as I can. If it's something I can't get answered, I'll get it found out and uh, try to help you out the best I can. Okay, uh, if I don't know it, then I know I go to Ryan 99% of the time, he's going to have an answer pretty quick. Okay. Suggestion box, this is where once you get to using some of our resources, you can give us some suggestions of things you'd like to see or like to have changed. Uh, usage policy, website facts, and some of the technical information specs about the website and uh, what you need in a computing, which about all work, even my cell phone works. Um, uh, the learning management system will work on them. Okay, but it'll give you the specs for the systems that you need in order to run this program. Okay, workshop request. I don't know that anybody ever uses that. Uh, we do workshops, like I said, in the summertime. Typically, the school districts will contact us through a different avenue than that. They'll either call or email. Okay, uh, we have a Facebook. Um, we have a Facebook account and a Twitter account. I make posts to each each and every day. Usually I'm recommending uh, some good resources. 
uh, that are online resources and free for teachers. Okay. Uh, latest news. Uh, Ryan tries, and what you see, it, you see it right down here actually. Uh, anytime he's going to uh, do an update or whatever, he will po post it in the latest news. Okay, you can also link it there to our archive links. Okay, newsletters, we do a monthly newsletter. If you've created an account with us, we have your email and you will be getting a newsletter from us. And they're archived right there. Okay, the most important one over here on this side is this tutorials and videos. Okay, if you go to it, I have made these video lessons and then these are text in a text form tutorials on what they say they are okay which is how you do things on Moodle okay and how you set up your course how you put different things on your course and so forth okay so these videos like I go to introduction and course organization that is kind of a beginning Moodle um, introductory video on showing you how to get a course set up and organize it a little bit okay so your students can use it well so if you click on these it takes you right to the videos in which I do have them on a YouTube channel okay um, and they're they're available all the time all right uh, so each one of these are different things like calculated simple question that's telling you how to set up calculated simple questions on like a quiz or a test okay um, like hidden picture game that's showing you how you can create a hidden picture game and put it on your middle course okay lesson activity and, and so forth these are all different activities and types of things that you put on your course and I kind of put ones and tutorials on one so I felt that uh, teachers need most help with okay down here are tutorials in text form so if you go to these like assignment is telling you how to go about putting an assignment on your course kind of step by step okay in a text form okay there's no audio to it okay audio or video okay but that's what all the rest of these are down here are tutorials okay so when you get to using Moodle and you want to know how to do something or add something to your course then that is the link to go to and uh, we have a pretty comprehensive list of tutorials okay then back over on this side if you go to event registration event registration is where we have some online training courses for you to learn how to use Moodle and, uh, and the Moodle LMS okay we have these offered on a monthly basis Okay, now then the crash courses are offered every month. Okay, the crash courses are um, do at your own pace. Okay, uh, when you take one of the courses, okay, you're going to be going through step by step how to build your own course. Okay, how to build your own middle course. Like, crash course on middle activities and resources it's going to show you how to start putting some activities and different predominantly online resources and put them on your course for your students to be able to access and do okay once you have them on the course if you go crash course on middle quiz question types that's showing you how to create different types of questions put into quizzes and tests and then crash course on middle grade books shows you how you say takes you through how to set up a grade book and do grading um, of assignments and so forth on your on your middle course okay but what you do on these you'll click on them and then this is how you register for these courses once you come once you click on them okay and you come down to the down whatever reason that's not showing up um, They don't have all the I'll have to look at it again but um, when you go to most of them it's going to have I want to look at that one where you fill in oh I know what it is because I'm a okay 
it's not showing me the way it'll show you when you click on these okay because I'm a um, I'm an account manager on, on on here okay when you click on this it's going to give you a complete form down here to fill out okay uh, and register for that given course I'm not getting it because I'm a um, I'm a manager on these accounts, so I'm not seeing the same view you'll see on them. Okay, but those are the crash courses. If you go to these courses, if they're showing up basic, middle, intermediate, middle, and advanced middle, these are very comprehensive courses that Ryan Smith runs, and they go one week at a time for five weeks. Okay, so if you take the basic middle course, Ryan takes you through one week at a time, and you'll build your first Moodle course. By the time you get to the end of five weeks, you should have a Moodle course populated with some assignments and activities for students to be able to do off of the course. Okay, and at the end of each of the courses, whether it's crash courses or these basic, intermediate, and advanced, you can get PGPs. Okay, the simplest courses you get eight, B, eight PGPs. These courses up here, uh, Ryan awards you ten PGPs upon completion. Okay, what he does, you have assignments to do as you go along, which is where you're building things on your course, and you will get PGPs for it. Okay, so uh, that's what these are. Okay, now to show you an example of them, um, I'll just go to them. Okay. Okay, here's if you're once you're registered in them okay then the courses are going to look like this okay and then in each one of these weeks he's going to have assignments for you to do okay um, he's not got that one open right now so let me get one that let me get one of mine Okay, so if you go to one of the crash courses, okay, here's a crash course. Okay, this is a course when you'd register for the course and I, and uh, and you're taking the course, this is what you see. Okay, like I said, you get eight, eight PGPs on this course. As you come down through here, these are the sections of the course. You, of course, you're going to start up here and you're going to do these assignments. Okay, and which is stepping you down to in this section you will learn to add assignments to your Moodle course and create chat rooms, create databases. I'm taking you down through here step by step. These are actually tutorials here. And then here's what your assignments are that you'll actually assign that you'll actually create onto your own courses. The basic Moodle courses are set up just like this. Except this one you can go you can actually do like this crash course in two or three days time okay if you just sit on it and do it okay the crash courses you're only going to see and that's why I was, when I was on that other one he hadn't that wasn't opened up yet for use uh, you're only going to be on one section at a time so when you go on the course you'll probably just see the first section okay and then the second week you'll see the next section up here Okay, and that's kind of way Ryan runs those. Okay, uh, but th that's middle training for you. Uh, the the intermediate and the advanced courses take you into higher level things that you can be doing with your courses, particularly building some um, high quality uh, assessments and and uh, doing things like workshops, uh, things that are a little bit more uh, tedious on your courses that you can do with your students. Okay, so that's that's our training all under event registration. Okay, if you go to search digital materials, we actually do have some things on here. Uh, these these are most are in math and math and science. Uh, you can search by state standards, which if you go on here, the state standards are all on here. Okay, that you can drill into if I want to go into math. Okay, and I go to uh, 
say eighth grade math, there's 529 resources we have in our database, then here's all the standards. And you can get, so if you're like teaching some algebra and functions, and you're trying to find some good quality resources for algebra and functions, you can click here, okay? Okay, and you should see that it's populated up here, and I go search, and then this is gonna show you these resources. Okay, and then you can go to them, which they're all going to be on online resources. This is a Math is Fun resource. Okay, and different teachers through time have added these to our database. So actually resources teachers have used. Okay, so again, that is under Search Digital Materials. You can search by standards if you choose. Drill into the standards and look for resource for them. Or you can simply use the search box here and say I want something on um, sales okay, I'm teaching biology I want resources on sales then I can get these resources okay and if you click on them you go right to the websites and see whether you like them or not okay so uh, that's search digital materials okay that's the database that was built over however many years since the beginning of this program okay or this project okay so now then take you on in here show you some more if you are if you're really interested in uh, actually getting started on Moodle what uh, a thing I did build for teachers that you can t totally do at your own pace uh, you'll just have to email and let me know I have set up a uh, and got this really going for the pandemic and when teachers are really forced online so I have a 20 I call it the 2020 crash course on Moodle for Indiana teachers okay and it is a course that I can that that I just enroll you in and on the course I have uh, examples of everything you can put on a Moodle course okay or that you'd want to Okay, so what you're seeing here, you're actually seeing a Moodle course. Okay, the main content is right down through here. And then I have blocks set up over here. So what I'm doing, I'm modeling a course to you, but then in it, I'm using it as a tutorial for you to set up your own courses. Okay, so uh, here's examples of activities and resources for a course. Okay, these are all sections. Okay, like in, if you had a Moodle course, this would be like your different chapters or your different units in the course okay so if I go to examples and activities here then I have here all right PowerPoints Word documents embedded videos these are examples of things that you can put onto your own Moodle course okay and as soon as they're on here they're accessible to your students okay uh, I mean just as soon as you put them on there okay now some neat things once you have things on your course okay if you turn editing on up here just to show you some of the sweet things on Moodle okay okay all of these are available to my students but if I go over here to the edit button at any point in time I can I can hide any of them okay so if I hide that students can't see it until I want them to see it Okay, uh, but now then, other things that I can do is on each and uh, each type of resource, I can restrict access, so I make it only visible to students I wanted to. So if you add restrictions like activity completion, you put in this you will, and I think this is very unique for uh, an LMS uh, and something Moodle has over some of the others like they have to complete you'll be able to pick all the rest of the assignments they must complete before they move on okay but now if you have a class that has uh, if you have uh, some uh, special ed students or and, and or different groups of students different ability level students you can also put restrictions in there that uh, it will only the uh, the student must be uh, must or must not be in a particular group okay so there are several different settings that you can put in for the um, 
for the restrictions. Okay, and that's where you'd use group. And that's where when you put your students into your course, you'd group them. Like you have lower ability and higher ability students, you'd have the, whatever you'd call your different groups, you can make assignments and, and activities and resources available to only certain students in, in your class by groups. Okay, and those are some, kind of some unique settings um, for your things on the course. Okay, now then, all common resources like PowerPoints, Word documents, PDFs, you can just drag and drop them onto your course. If you have them on your desktop or in files on your computer, uh, if you made up PowerPoint, you can drag and drop it on here. As soon as you've dragged it and dropped it on there, it's available to your students. So if you've used a PowerPoint in a video lesson you've done with students or a lecture you've done in class or a talk you've done in class, as soon as you add it to your PowerPoint, they've got it. Okay, and it's available to them on any of their devices. Okay, better on hide that. Okay, but it's real easy to uh, hide or show the items. So the rest of the way down on, on this course, this is, a, this is a course I'll make available to you if you want it. Then I have essentially a tutorial for doing most of the common things you want to do on a middle course. Creating and customizing your own middle course. Right there. I'm taking you step by step down through how you do that. Okay. Uh, like I'm getting specifically here and saying how you can make your course look a little bit more professional. Okay, and give some organization to it. Adding common resources to your com to your Moodle course. Adding blocks to your Moodle course. Okay, blocks are these over here. Okay, so like this is a block. I've made it for Math is Fun. This is a direct link for my students to Math is Fun if it's a site that I use all the time. Okay, and it's real simple to do these. Uh, you will add your block. See that right there? Add block. You click on add block, and it's going to give you a block, okay, um, okay, to choose from. I usually just use the uh, HTML block, what I use, okay. Then you'll see that that block added should have been over here. Let me see. There it is. Okay. The block added right there. Okay, now then, if I'm wanting to do one of these things, okay, then I'm going to go configure block. Okay, I'm clicking on the gear called gear. I called it the edit icon. I go to configure block, and this is where I'm going to do my magic. Okay, so like I say, I like to use FET. FET simulations. Okay. If I have my FET website, okay, so if I'm on the uh, FET website, I'm just going to the main page and take the main page, okay, and I want to book at, mark at for my students in a block, I go to it, I copy and paste it, I'm going to put that, okay, right here, but what I try to do is put an image as well. Okay, um, and I'm just kind of going through the process kind of quick here. Um, I just told me an image to use. Okay, I go to my image. Okay, and a key thing you want to do when you uh, get these images is make sure they're not too doggone big. So I'm probably going to go something like that. Okay, and I go save image, save image, and see I put that image in into here. Okay, now then I'm going to center it, and then 
I'm going to put my URL in. Okay, and that's where I've got this. Okay, I'm put the URL in right there. Okay, open in new window, create link, and then save changes. And then you will see, although I've got one right up here, I did the one I just made is this one. It's that easy to use. And now I have a link right there for my students to go to that resource. Okay, that's blocks on the course. Okay, just kind of show you. Okay. Um, okay. That's that's kind of that's kind of what I have as far as um, resources to show you how to get get along moving along with using our online resources and predominantly Moodle. Okay, uh, so kind of to rehash here, when you sign on to the page, you are on the Moodle course. Okay, we have about us information over here. We have tutorials and help here. We have the courses that you can enroll in that are free to give you some Moodle training and to give you some PGPs here we have crash courses and then we have basic intermediate and advanced Moodle training that takes you all the way through setting up courses okay if you are interested with, uh, in really jumping in and getting started I made the crash course on Moodle for Indiana teachers that you will have to email me to let me know that you're interested in being in enrolled on that one and that way you can jump right in because this one is loaded with a bunch of stuff and really get you started on setting up your own courses all the way down to setting up quizzes uh, one, that's one thing I didn't show you when I was here is if you go down here to quizzes I have the different types of quiz questions that you can put into your courses ranging from true false to drag and drop which I really like the drag, drag and drop ones um, because like this is a drag and drop one where I've taken an image I actually use in chemistry class teaching and when I made this question then they can drag these and label their anode and their cathode in this case okay and I've made an image of my own and uh, I really like it I mean and they're great for biology I mean you take your own images in labs that you do or anatomy and physiology and have students label them on tests and quizzes they're good questions okay um, but there's several different types of uh, questions you math the math people calculated calculated simple questions awesome because if you go into those okay um, on these, all right. This is on. This is a density problem. What is the volume of aluminum in a sample if it has a mass of 37.73 grams? Aluminum has a density of 2.7 grams per centimeter cube. Okay. This is a, this is a quiz question given to students. Okay. But by making it a calculated, simple question, when I made this up, this number has been put into a random numbers generator when I made the question. Each and every attempt on this quiz question a different number is put in here. So every student that takes your test, your quiz, will get a different number here. So they essentially get a different problem than a student sitting next to them. Okay, uh, or if you give multiple attempts on a quiz, uh, then the student when they take it the second time around each of your math problems are going to have different numbers put in those. Those are those are some pretty neat questions for you to use. Take a little bit of time to set them up, but they're, they're good questions. Okay. So anyway, have that. Have the um, have the um, crash course for you to use there um, at your at your leisure. Okay. And you can steal anything from me because I'm going to put you in as a teacher in the course which means you can uh, you can borrow any of my resources and use them as your own okay uh, okay so that's kind of what we have available okay other things with the uh, prison project 
uh, beyond this. Uh, we do a um, summer workshop each and every summer in which uh, we plan on doing this summer. We hope we get on through this pandemic anyway and able to do it. We have uh, sustainable alternative energy uh, course workshop that we do that is one week long. You actually live on the uh, Rose Holman campus for that time period. Uh, we put you up in uh, pretty nice dorms here. They're actually apartments. And um, here, here's the course I have set up for. Uh, here's a breakdown of it. Uh, we start actually on a Sunday evening and we actually go through a Friday. We haven't set the dates yet because uh, we're waiting to see what happens as we come out of this pandemic, we hope. Okay, um, but it starts on a Sunday evening and we'll go through a Friday. And each of the days of the course, we go through the different types of um, uh, energy providers that we have, uh, predominantly in the state of Indiana. Because what we do during the workshop is like on uh, a given day, okay, we're going to start out like on a Monday, you're going to start out, we're going to start out with Dr. Mech giving a lecture on uh, power grid and, and actually get into uh, uh, co-fired power plants. Okay, and how, we, how we're producing electricity uh, via those means and distributing, carrying that electricity throughout Indiana and the Midwest. Okay, but then in the afternoons, we're going to take you on field trips. Okay, we go to some power plants. Uh, we go to a Duke Energy Cayuga Power Plant. We go to the um, uh, Marin power, power Plant in Sullivan County. And we go to a Nipsco Gas Fire power plant out in, uh, outside of West Terre Haute area. And then we we'll go to the, uh, we've gone to different solar farms. Uh, this year I plan to go to a solar farm at a, within, in a school district, I think probably Wayne Township. Okay, uh, if the dates match up right, there are other schools that we can go to up around Kokomo. Okay, um, and then we'll go up to the uh, wind turbines up in Benton, Benton County one day. So in the morning you start out with the lectures, I follow that by lab activities, and then follow that with field trips that we go on, which we, they are full days, okay? Uh, but teachers get a lot out of it and we have a lot of fun. Okay, so if you're interested in that, you can also email me. Uh, but those are, those are the main things that we do in prison. That's kind of an introduction to us and what we do and what I have to uh, uh, provide to teachers. Okay, looking forward to working with some of you. Hopefully some of you uh, uh, join our sessions. I have two sessions. I have one on Saturday uh, at 11.15 in which I'm actually going to have uh, uh, Nora Walsh with me. Uh, Nora Walsh teaches at Evansville Wrights High School. Um, and she will be presenting on some of the uh, strategies she uses on Moodle which uh, she has gone completely textbook-less, is what she calls it. Um, and she does a fantastic job of teaching chemistry. She teaches regular chemistry. She teaches advanced placement uh, chemistry, AP chemistry as well. On Sunday at 2.15 in the afternoon, I'm going to have Kevin Gill and Brad Moorhead from Edgewood Junior High School. They are math teachers, sixth grade math teachers teaching on some of their strategies, some of the really neat things that they do with their students um, on their uh, online courses, on their Moodle courses. They really get into some gaming type activities and do some really engaging things with their students. So I'm looking forward to them sharing what they do and I think uh, it can do a lot of our teachers some good. Uh, and these could be their strategies, I'm sure could be used on Canvas and other learning management systems other than Moodle F have to be. Okay, and that's it. That's kind of the main things I have for you. Please, if you have questions, uh, you can email me. You can uh, click to contact us on the, uh, on the page and uh, we'd, be, we'd love to work with you. Have a good experience at Hasty. Thank you.